Hi everyone, welcome to SOCI 1010 section W01, Introduction to Sociology. I'm your instructor, Gary Heidinger. Uh, if you've not done so, as quickly as possible, please go on to Momentum D2L and access the course syllabus. I would encourage you to go ahead and make a hard copy and read it carefully, literally from cover to cover. Now I realize that there are certain parts that are not as applicable as others, but this is a pretty detailed syllabus and I hope that the information included will prove to be beneficial. I've discovered that anywhere from 90 to perhaps 95, 90 per six, six percent of student problems in my particular online web-based course, this one, SOCI 1010, is because they don't thoroughly read the syllabus. Now I realize certain parts of the syllabus aren't necessarily as applicable as others, but you must reference it and I would encourage you to read it frequently. Right off, you might want to ask yourself, and I'm sure some of you already have done just that, what exactly do I have to do in order to be successful in this particular course? Believe it or not, there is research that highlights what's important for any student trying to complete successfully a web-based online course. Now, if you go to your syllabus over on page four, you'll note again exactly what I was getting at. Uh, research on online students in terms of those that have been successful. These are the particular traits that are important. Read through each one of these carefully. You want to remember that in an online web-based course, whether you're a veteran or you're just now getting started, it requires a lot of effort, particularly with respect to a short-term summer session like ours, eight weeks. You got to get organized quickly. You got to get focused. You're the one that's going to be supplying the commitment. So I would encourage all of you as just as soon as you can, set goals related to what you expect from this course. You can use the syllabus as a springboard, but likewise look through the textbook. Uh, create some kind of a workable plan that ensures the goals you set and the goals that are set for the course itself, and these are noted on the first and second page of the course syllabus, can be realized. You've got to apply yourself. I repeat, you've got to apply yourself. Each of you has a very, 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 very busy lifestyle. You have all kinds of responsibilities, but you're going to have to set aside some time for this particular course. And if you've got a family, you're going to have to just literally emphasize to them, this is my course time. I've got to commit to my studies. Likewise, take time to determine if you've learned specific information. Don't just assume it's going to happen by running your eyes over the page in the textbook or just watching a video lesson. You may want to reread. I would encourage you, particularly in terms of reading assignments in the textbook, read actively. All of you know how to read, but at the same time, reading actively means you're reading for retention. And if you'll notice, the textbook is set up in, in such a way to encourage this style of reading. When you read a section, be it large or short or small, stop and just ask yourself the very simple question, what did I just read? Now, if you are clueless, like frequently was the case with me as an undergraduate, you're not reading actively. Start off by skimming each assigned chapter's summary. That's the first thing you want to focus on. It gives you some indication of what the chapter is about. At the same time, you may want to watch the accompanying video lessons several times. Don't just assume one time is necessarily going to be enough. Now, at the same time, you want to work very hard on developing critical thinking skills. That's a key for any social science course. You got to develop a willingness to ask questions. Furthermore, 
be cautious as to conclusions that emerge just from one or a single experience. Frequently I know students I've had, and I was of this mindset as well as an undergraduate, um, if I had an experience, I assumed everybody did. Or if I had an experience that challenged or contradicted a particular notion or idea that was presented in class, I tended to just ignore it. Again, be cautious about conclusions that emerge from a single experience. Uh, be aware, too, of biased assumptions, including your own. Work to be open-minded. I repeat that. Work to be open-minded. Try to look at all sides of the issue. Doesn't mean you've got to give up your basic values or beliefs, but look at all sides of a particular issue. Don't just lock in to one side and one side only. Be willing to examine your arguments. Criticize them and, if necessary, admit when they're wrong or when you're uncertain about the results. Now, if you can keep those ideas in mind and follow along with what's noted here, I truly believe you'll be successful in this particular course. Now, at this point, I'm sure a lot of you are asking yourself, what exactly do I have to do to get out of this class with a high grade? What does Heidinger expect of me? Well, basically, this is all laid out for you beginning on the fifth page of the syllabus under this heading of gradings and evaluation. Um, you get some information again right off. Important thing to remember, the course consists from an evaluation standpoint of two key components. Number one, three exams. Now, I've gone into some detail, starting down at the bottom of the fifth page of the study guide to kind of explain what the exams are going to be like in terms of structure. The first two exams, uh, I would encourage you to bear in mind, if you will, uh, they're going to be similar in design. They'll consist of two parts. Part one will be two discussion questions. And then the second part will be 25, 26 multiple choice questions. And on exam one and two, there will be three extra credit multiple choice questions. Now I've explained in the syllabus the point values that will be associated with all. Uh, the multiple choice questions are going to be worth one point each. Okay? And likewise, you'll have a way via Momentum D2L to access discussion question options for exam one and exam two. Now on the first exam, most likely what's going to happen is I will list four discussion questions, ask you to pick the two you feel best qualified to answer. On exam two, slightly different. There'll be one discussion question where you will not have an option. It deals with a very, very, very important concept known as ethnocentrism, something we'll get into related particularly to chapter two, dealing with the notion of culture. It's a fancy way of saying everybody everywhere thinks their particular way of living is the best. So they're going to evaluate all other ways of living by the standards of their own. Now the second discussion question on the second exam, you'll have an option. The option A, option B. You'll pick the one you feel best qualified to answer. So again, first exam, part one, the discussion questions, there'll be four discussion questions, A, B, C, D. You pick the two you feel best qualified to answer. Then go on and answer the multiple choice questions. Test number two, that first part, dealing with discussion questions, there'll be one question on ethnocentrism and an accompanying notion known as cultural relativism. All this is noted in the syllabus. And then the second discussion question, you'll have an option, A and B. You pick the one you feel best qualified to answer. Then you will answer 25, 26 multiple choice questions. And I'll remind you again that on both test one and test two, there'll be at least three 
extra credit multiple choice questions. Now the final exam, as is noted in the syllabus, will be different. It will have no discussion questions. It'll consist of 40 multiple choice questions, one point each, and there will be three, I repeat, three extra credit at least multiple choice questions. So those are the three exams. Now if you will notice on page six of the syllabus, you will be expected to complete these exams at one of four testing centers. Now I know some of you might very well be a bit upset with this. Hey, this is a web class, an online class, and we've got to come into a testing center to take tests. Keep in mind, this is, again, a practice found everywhere in the United States. Uh, many Roan State faculty members who teach web-based classes require that students come in the testing center. I know it's an inconvenience, and I apologize for that, but it's only for three times. Now, I've noted which three, excuse me, which four testing centers are available. Uh, Oak Ridge, Roan County, Campbell County, or Cumberland County. Now, the first test, it needs to be completed sometime between June the 11th and Monday, June the 25th. You pick the time. Now, bear in mind, these testing centers have different days and hours of operation. I've given you some information in the syllabus as to how you can access those days and hours of operation. When you go into a testing center, you don't have to check in. You don't have to call and clear it with the proctors on duty or call or email me. Just go in when they're open. Tell them again you're taking SOCI 1010 section W01. You're in a Heidegger's class. They'll give you a hard copy of the exam, just the way you had it probably in high school. Okay? Now, Make sure when you take those exams, put your name on the test paper. You'd be surprised the number of tests I get without students' names on them. Be sure you do that. On the first two tests, you'll notice a couple of sheets of blank paper stapled to the back side of exam one and two. Use those for answering the discussion questions. You'll circle what you believe to be the correct answers. Got that? on the exam itself when it comes to the multiple choice questions. On the last exam, again, remember, no discussion questions, 40 multiple choice questions. You'll again circle what you believe to be the correct answer on the exam. Now, keep in mind there's a second component, evaluation component, other than the three exams. And that's highlighted over on the seventh page of the syllabus. I'm going to expect you to complete what I call an action learning project. Okay. Now, what's involved here is using Hollywood as a teaching tool. I want you to select the film and analyze it from a sociological point of view or perspective. I've included, you'll notice down at the bottom of the page and over on the next page, a list of films you might consider. I hope you'll find one of these applicable. If on the other hand, you look at all of them and you go, boring, have you got anything else? Run it by me, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm gonna say go with it, okay? But I've again described in detail what I'm looking for. I want your sociological interpretation of a film. Now, you're gonna be introduced early on in chapter one in the text to three major sociological theoretical perspectives. One of the things you might consider doing is applying one or all three to the film that you select. Furthermore, does the film highlight certain concepts that we've talked about during the course of the class itself? If so, how? Go into some detail. I'm interested in what you think. Now, if you will notice, I do not want you to use any printed material that you'll find online or that might be found in some sort of hard copy magazine. In other words, stay away from reviews. I'm interested in what 
you think. Not what they think, what you think. Now, I've got a means by which to check whether or not you borrowed somebody else's ideas and presented them as your own. All of you know what that is, right? Plagiarism. How many of you at work have accomplished a task only to find the boss or some higher up taking credit for your hard work? If that's ever happened, has that angered and frustrated you? Well, that to me is the same thing when you plagiarize. You're presenting somebody else's ideas as your own. Don't do that. It's just something to avoid. Notice again, I'm interested in your reactions. What do you think? There's no correct answers here. I'm just looking for, again, your interpretations and how well you express yourself. Now, as you go a little bit further into the syllabus itself, you'll notice on the eighth page, there is a due date, okay, of the 18th of July, Wednesday. Uh, you can present these to me online, either through a Momentum D2L. You can send them as an attachment to my RaiderNet address as well. And don't, don't forget this. You see that? An extra credit. You can do a second project, and you can earn extra points. Extra points. You can get, notice that, you can get up to 10 points of extra credit by completing a second project. So keep that in mind. And pay a bit of attention again to what I was just harping on a moment ago. Uh, I make no excuses for me harping on this. This is an absolute no-no. Do not plagiarize. Now that's the basics for the class. But you still may have some questions. Well, how is this going to take place? What exactly am I going to have to do? Well, let me illustrate. Over on the ninth page, of the syllabus. You'll notice a listing of video lessons and textbook reading assignments. Now the first exam, you are going to, and again this is all noted in the syllabus, covers the content of chapters 1 and 2. 1 and 2 in the text. So what you're going to, how are you going to go about this? How should you start off? Well, here's what I recommend very strongly. Start off by reading chapter one. Now, once you've completed chapter one, watch the accompanying videos, video lessons that are associated with unit one. Got that? Now, once you go over the material, you get comfortable with it, you think you, again, are comfortable enough to proceed then go on and read chapter two in the text. And then, once you've read chapter two carefully, look at the accompanying video lessons under the heading of unit two. Now, anything you're not sure about, reread it in the text. Watch the accompanying videos. Let those video lessons reinforce what you read. You're gonna start off by reading first then watching the video lessons. Now once you've done this and you're comfortable with the content of chapters 1 and 2 and the content of the video lessons in units 1 and 2, you're ready to go. You're ready to take the exam. Now when you take that exam, read the questions carefully, on multiple choice questions, trust your first impression. That's it in a nutshell. Now if you'll notice, one key avenue for success in a video course, let the instructor know if you've got questions. I'll do all I possibly can to assist you. Now in closing, I hope that you will take something away from this course beyond three hours of credit and a letter grade. I'd like to think 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now, you got more to say about this course and maybe mispronouncing my weird last name and trying to remember the grade that you received. Bear in mind, this is a useful course. It's really, in a lot of respects, the easiest course you'll take as an undergraduate. Why? Because it deals with what you see going on around you. 
you've taken it for granted. You're now being asked to view it as if you were seeing it for the first time. That's the genuine challenge. But look at it this way, and I'm, I'm fond of sharing this with my face-to-face -face students. After you graduate, receive an undergraduate degree, go on and get a graduate degree. You may never again complete a complex algebraic equation. You may never be pressed to focus on human taxonomy. In other words, how do you classify humans biologically? You may never again analyze the contents of a poem written by Emily Dickinson or Gwendolyn Brooke or Langston Hughes or Maya Angelou. You may never again be asked to analyze, come up with, search, better appreciate and understand, significant developments that lead to some gargantuan historical change like the Renaissance or World War II. But I can tell you something you'll be doing the rest of your life. You know what it is? I think you probably already picked up on it. You're going to be interacting with people. That's what sociology is about. The focus of psychology is on what's going on right up here. What makes me tick? What inherited traits makes me who I am? In sociology, it's your social environment, the people with whom you interact, your social position or social rank or status. So welcome aboard. I hope that you will find the course challenging and interesting. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Take care and good luck.